Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today I'm working on a 2007 Hyundai Elantra. I'll be showing you something fairly simple, rear shocks. I want to be the guy that shows you how to do this. If you need this or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Now it's time to loosen these up, okay? 21 millimeter. We've got our long uh, ratchet here. I've got the majority of the weight of the vehicle off the ground. It's just barely touching so I can, uh, you know, remove the lug nuts or at least break them free without spinning the wheel, okay? Just gonna give it a quick crank. I'm not gonna loosen it up all the way. Last lug nut, I'm holding the wheel. Take off our hubcap. Now we're gonna carefully take the wheel down, lower it to the ground, and we'll put it safely out of the way. So here we go. We're gonna take out the lower area of this shock first. This side right here is a 19. I'm gonna use a wrench. I'm just gonna get it on there. The other side, also a 19. You can use a ratchet, you can use whatever you want. We're just gonna get it off. I'm gonna use an air gun. Give us a little shake. Feels like it's pretty much ready to come out. There's my bolt. 14, 14. Whatever you gotta do to take them out. You do you, boo boo. There we go. Let's grab both of these. That's what they look like. They're both the same. Grab my shock. I'm gonna condense it. Pull it up and out. So we're gonna be doing the rear shocks, right? It's important to remember that there's a big difference between rear shocks and front struts. Struts, generally speaking, have a big coil going around them, okay? A big spring. It looks something like this. If you're working on something that has a big spring around it that looks like this, you would not want to touch this right here. This is the nut in the center, okay? Where this does not have a big spring, that means that this isn't compressed and there's no force that's gonna to want to drive it up when I take that nut off. If you took off this nut on the top of that one, pew, unless you have that spring compressed, okay? Big difference. Let's get it off. So now it's time to work on this, right? We've got it out. The difference is our new shock doesn't come with this cap, okay? So to get that cap off, there's a little rubber boot here. You just pull this aside. It doesn't come out fully, just so you know it's still attached there. Right under here, there's a 17 millimeter nut, okay? So you're gonna wanna remove that. An easy way to do that would be, well, an air gun, first of all, but if you don't have access to that, just slide this down. We're gonna grab onto the shaft with some locking pliers so we can hold it. And then we'll just use our 17 millimeter and a ratchet, take it right off. I'm gonna try to grab onto this with some locking pliers. Try to grab it as tight as I can. I think I can go a little tighter than that. Okay. Behind here is our 17 millimeter nut. There we are. I'm gonna fully remove that. There's our nut, set that aside, pull this off, there's our mount, get our locking pliers off of here, pull that off of here, make sure it's in good condition, we'll set this stuff aside, and there we go, there's our old shock. Over here we have our original rear shock from our 2007 Hyundai Elantra, we just removed it. Over here, we have our brand new quality 1A auto part. It's got the same mounting hole at the bottom there. Okay, same width. Looks pretty good. The cylinder itself, it's the same height. And this is a little shorter, but that's only because this is still compressed. In one second, I'll show you how to go ahead and um, get this ready to go. So with that being said, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be a great part to install, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. If you need this or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. So now it's time to get this puppy charged up. What I like to do, push down. It's not gonna come up super fast. We'll get this out of the way. I'm gonna leave this plastic on here. Let it come all the way up. 
Once it's hanging out there, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back down. I like to do this several times, at least three times. Three to five times would be best. Never less than once. <laughs> uh, you need to get everything you know, mixed up and charged in there. Every time you push it down, it gets a little stiffer. That means you're doing the right thing here. Okay? So like I said, do that three to five times. And then you're clear to start getting all those parts put onto your new quality 1A auto part. We've got this all gassed up, right? We did our three to five. Boom, 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 boom. Easy peasy. We're gonna take this, slide it right over, put the shaft through the hole, goes right down. This just kind of protects this right in here from as much uh, you know debris and crud, whatever gets kicked up. It's gonna help keep the, it out of there, okay? Pretty basic. We've got our mount, just goes right on top here. We'll flip this up. Underneath there, there was a little lifter washer, nice and thick. That goes right there. We've got our brand new nut. It's a little locking nut. You can see it's got little wedges on there. Just gonna put it right up in here. Okay, it starts on. There we are, it's pretty much bottomed out there. I still gotta bring it all the way down, but that's as far as the lock's gonna let me go. So I'll bring it back down here. There's several ways you could do this. Um, you can go ahead and grab onto the top here if you wanted to, some locking pliers, and use a wrench, wrench this on, or you can use your locking pliers, grab all the way up as close to the top as you can. You don't wanna grab anywhere down close to where the piston rides up and down, because if you create a burr with this, you don't wanna hit in that seal, okay? So, you know, the best way to do it would be to grab up there, but if you don't wanna do, you know, the wrenching and sit there for an hour, just grab up as high as you can, because I know this shock isn't gonna make its way all the way, you know, up to here. That'd be pretty much impossible. <clears throat> Clamp that puppy down. Take my ratchet. I'm gonna get the right socket, and we're gonna tighten it up. We've got our locking pliers on here. I'm gonna grab my 15 millimeter socket now. That's what size our new locking nut is. I was just thinking about something. I'm gonna use my locking pliers. I'm gonna come down a little lower with it, actually. Just because I wanna make sure that this can come down as far as it needs to. And if my locking pliers are holding it from coming down, then it might cause an issue. There we go. I got that squeezed as far as it's gonna go. I still got plenty of room. Perfect. Let's tighten this puppy up, 15 millimeter. Air gun would be nice. Here we go. Go ahead and tighten it. Bonk, bonk. There we are. You want to make sure that this is closed. When you get it up in the body of the car, it will sit down there. You know what I mean? It's going to be hitting up against the body, so it'll be pinched nice and shut for you, okay? So this spins, just so you know. When we go to get into the vehicle, it's going to be like this. You might have to just compress it to get it between the knuckle and the uh, body of the car. This is the lower bolt for the uh, rear shock. I'm going to put a little bit of never seize here, okay? I'm not gonna put it on the threads. If you wanted to put something on the threads, you can go ahead and put a little bit of thread locker. That might be a good idea. Up here, I'm gonna use a little bit of Never Seize. Not too much, just enough so someday, if I ever have to take these shocks back out again, they won't break up in the body here because getting those out once they break, super fun. And by super fun, I mean not fun. We've got our brand new quality 1A Auto shock here. What I'm gonna do at this point, I'm just gonna compress it Put it up in here. There we are. Perfect. So we got it hanging out. It's doing its thing. It's having a good time with its buddies. I'm gonna line up the bottom bowl hole. I'm just gonna wiggle the shock around so this bolt can go all the way through. There we are. Start the nut on. Like I said, thread locker if you want. It's up to you, it's your prerogative. We have our two upper bolts. Now that we have the lower bolt through, now is a great time to do the upper. Go ahead and do this, and we can just flex it a little bit. Get this over to where it needs to go. 
I'm just gonna start the one that does reach. Um, you can take a jack or whatever you've got, try to jack this up. I'm just gonna use something as basic as a pry bar. All I needed to do was come up enough to get my bolt started, okay? Once I get it started, let's go ahead and tighten them down and it'll pull it right in. No worries. Easy peasy. We're gonna tighten these up 14 millimeter. This one, and then I'll tighten that one up fully. Both of them are pretty good, so we'll go ahead and tighten it. Feels good. Let's get this one again real quick. Very nice. Tight, tight. As you can see, the rubber seal up along the top that I was talking about is pressed right up against the body of the vehicle. We won't get any moisture in there. So now we can move ahead. We're gonna go down to our lower bolt. That's gonna to be torqued to 116 foot-pounds. Let's grab our tools. To get these started, or bottom them out, we're gonna go 19, 19, okay? And then we'll go ahead and torque them down once it's fully bottomed out. There we are, 116 foot-pounds with my 19 millimeter. All right, it's time to get the wheel up on here. We've got our lug nuts close, we've got our hubcap. I'm just gonna take it, roll it up my leg here. Get it on there. Take my hubcap. We've got our little slot right there where our valve stem goes through. Get one lug nut on while I'm still holding it. Make sure it's on there good. There we go, the wheel can't fall off. Now I'm gonna grab the others. 21 millimeter. I'm just gonna bottom these out. You can use an air gun if you have access to it. All right, I wanna make sure that we do this in a star pattern so the wheel won't get kinked on like this. If I tighten this one up and then this one, the wheel might be sitting like this. I might think I have these tightened down. Really, they're not, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. So, we'll get it close. We'll come down here. Air gun would make short work of this. Time to torque this down. 21 millimeter, star pattern. We're gonna go 80 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and go around in a circle here now. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.